Weapons and armor are getting a bit of an overhaul in Destiny 2. Guns will be still, of course, used to shoot things, and armor will still make us hunters look amazing. But there are a lot of things changing under the hood. As a preface, we could not inspect any items at the Destiny 2 event, so we have no idea what perks look like on the weapons themselves. We have no idea if there are sight options and stat mod trees like weapons currently have, so this video will only be going over the noticeable changes and not speculating too heavily. Let's start off with armor. First off, it seems that intellect, discipline, and strength are gone. Instead, the armor that you wear will now affect your armor, recovery, and agility stats. This is noted where you would normally see the intellect, discipline, and strength stats in the Destiny 1 UI, and armor, recovery, and agility still do the same thing that they currently do. In fact, it tells you when you hover over the area. Instead of having stats that reduce ability cooldown times on your armor, there were perks that give a static reduction to abilities. The Hunter Boots reduced the class ability cooldown, which might have been active since the cooldown was 17 seconds, and that seems a little bit like a strange number on its own. We also saw melee cooldown reduction on Warlocks, and grenade cooldown on Titans. I'll go over what this top perk is on all of the armor a little bit later in the video, since it pops up on weapons as well. Another great improvement is the de-evolution of our class items and ghosts. I know, it's a good thing. During the Taken King, ghosts and class items had stats and light level put on them. While this was nice for increasing our stats because it enabled us to hit tier 12 builds, it also caused items that were mostly used for cosmetic purposes to now be used for stats. So sometimes you would get a ghost or cloak that you really really liked but couldn't wear because it had subpar stats to something else. So with these stats gone now, we can finally pick our ghost shells and class items on how fabulous they make us look, as it should have stayed in the beginning. Now, moving over to weapons, the first thing I like to take notice of is how the stats are displayed. It seems like they're going to be making full use of the stat bars instead of a max impact sniper being like 20% of the bar. Also, rate of fire isn't displayed as a bar, but a clear number. I know this is still an alpha and that can go away. It certainly did in the Destiny 1 alpha to the beta, but I really hope that this isn't the case here. Rounds per minute is just so much easier to understand and get a picture of than a couple of pixels on a bar. It seems like some of the perks are carrying over and a few are getting redesigned. We don't know the extent of how many perks that there will be though. I saw a redesigned spray and play and crowd control, snapshot, persistence, and a few others were there as well in their normal state. The largest change to weapons though comes in how they are classified. Instead of primary, secondary, and heavy, now we have kinetic, energy, and power. Kinetic and energy weapons can be the same type of weapons, so submachine guns, sidearms, hand cannons, auto rifles, pulse rifles, scout rifles are all capable of being these. As far as I can tell, you cannot turn a kinetic weapon into an energy weapon. They can't swap places. It has to drop as such or be classified as that. If you're having trouble understanding this, try not to think of them in regards to our current weapon system. Kinetic and energy weapons can be the same weapon types, and the only real difference is that energy Energy weapons will help deal with active supers in PvP and shielded enemies in PvE. Yes, you can also have two of the same weapon type like having a hand cannon as both your kinetic and your energy. It actually gives you a lot of options too with your neutral play. Going for something like scout rifle in the kinetic and hand cannon in the energy could be a good loadout for PvP because it covers both long and shorter ranges. While auto rifles in the kinetic and SMGs for up close could be good for some PvE builds. There's going to be lots of interesting opportunities here to keep your loadouts ever changing. Power weapons are not the same thing as heavy weapons either. They're just weapons with a more defined role in the sandbox than the kinetic and energy weapon types. Power weapons can be shotguns, snipers, fusion rifles, rocket launchers, grenade launchers, and I didn't see them anywhere, but I'm going to assume that machine guns will be here as well. The weapons still pick up ammo in PvE like they normally do. White ammo bricks will refill your kinetic, green ammo bricks will fill up your energy weapon, and purple bricks will fill up your power weapon. In PvP, white and green bricks were dropping from kills, which is good because your energy weapons will do a slight bit more damage to active supers. You don't need to match elements either. All energy weapons will deal more damage to supers, and you'll probably use that quite a bit in the future, since all supers will be roaming supers. At least, the ones that we've seen and know that we are getting. Also, power weapon ammo in PvP can only be obtained from power brick boxes. These boxes do not drop ammo for everyone, only the one to fully activate the brick first. 
It goes away on death and doesn't drop a box for the enemy to use either, so you will have to be very careful picking it up since there might be someone on your team who could use it a little bit better than you. After looking at all of the perks on armor and weapons, there also appears to be a node that gives you a general description of the item. At least, that's what I think it does. So if you don't know how to read weapon perks or how that will actually affect your build, or you may have seen other weapons to know what high impact looks like, or you don't know how having high agility over armor stat will affect your character, then glancing at this will be a good way to quickly tell how an item will affect your loadout. Some weapons tell you they are balanced, others tell you they are high impact and thus slower rate of fire. The wrench in this theory of mine is that SMGs, auto rifles, and sidearms appear to have a lightweight perk on them instead of a casual friendly type perk as I'm calling this. Who knows at this point, but I just felt like pointing it out and expanding on what it might be for a little bit. If you're wondering why I haven't gone over the new weapon mod slot that we've seen on some of these guns, it's because we just don't know enough about it. I like speculating and there are are a couple screenshots where it looks like we can see laser sights added to some guns, but until we know more, I'm just not going to bother covering it. That about does it for this video. I hope you found the information here helpful. If you did, a positive rating would be appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.